In this video, we're going to talk about valence electrons, how to find them, and why they're important. So what we're going to look at first is we'll go down here to the full periodic table, and I have the names of the families written at the top. Now, the families of the periodic table are the columns. Columns are the vertical members of this periodic table, and so they're, they're, number, they're numbered at the top 1 through 18. And so the first family on the far left is the alkali metal family. You can see it labeled here. Number two, the alkaline earth metals. Three through 12 are called transition metals. 13, the boron family. 14, the carbon family. 15, the nitrogen family. 16, the oxygen family. 17, the halogens. And 18, the noble gases. So those are the families. And again, they're the columns, the up and down members of the periodic table here. What you're also seeing at the top is the valence electron number. You can see the valence electron number, and we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to find that. So what we're talking about here with the valence electrons, remember that you have in the nucleus, you have the protons and neutrons, and the nucleus here is represented by this black area, this black dot. Okay, We're not going to be looking specifically at the number of protons and neutrons in this video. We're going to talk more about the electrons and, and how they work. So for hydrogen, for example, we have one, in, you know, in the, in the tile for the periodic table, you'll see for hydrogen, it has the number one at the top, and that means it's a, that's the atomic number, that's the number of protons, and that's the number of electrons. So if it has one proton in the nucleus, it has one electron spinning around here somewhere. And these layers that you see, these shells, they're the circles, these are the orbits of where these electrons spin. So there's some rules that you need to follow when you're thinking about these, these electrons and where they spin and the shell numbers. The first shell can only hold two electrons. So the first shell will hold up to a maximum of two electrons. So that means, as we look at helium, it has an atomic number of two, two protons and two electrons. Two electrons spinning here, that means they would be spinning somewhere around here. It doesn't matter where I draw them on here because in reality they're, they're spinning so fast that you wouldn't even be able to see them. But that can only hold two, so that means as you get to one element larger, one atom larger is lithium, then you're going to need to add a second ring. You can see the second shell is added here. And they're going to orbit in that shell. So the second shell, as you add the electrons, can only hold up to eight. And how that works out is, for lithium, for example, I have one, two, one, two, three. Three total electrons. The first shell is full. You want to fill from the inside out. And then on the second shell, I only have one. Now, these ones that are, these electrons that are on the outermost shell, hydrogen has one, lithium has one on its outermost shell. Those are called valence electrons. So this term valence electrons at the title here, up at the title, they're going to be very important because they're going to tell you a little bit more about how the elements behave, how they're going to act, whether they're going to be calm or whether they're going to be explosive and very reactive. So as we're moving across this row, the rows are called periods of the periodic table. As we move across this row, you can see I have two shells. And what happens is as I move across here, Let's do beryllium. Beryllium has four electrons. You're adding a valence electron each time. So with boron, you would have three valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five total. And as I move across, I'm going to get to neon, which has ten. So that means I have two and eight on the outer shell. So this has eight valence electrons. And up here, that means that that shell is now full, according to my rule. So what happens? When you get one atom larger, you go to sodium, look what happens. You add a third shell, because there's no room for these electrons to spin, if you want to think of it that way. And so now we have added another layer. And so as you look at this one, it will only have one on the outer shell. Okay. And again, those are called valence electrons. And notice how, as we go down the family, as you go down the column, you have one valence electron for hydrogen, one for lithium, one for sodium. If I move down below here, keep going down, it follows the same pattern. Potassium 
would have one valence electron. Rubidium would have one valence electron. And so that whole family has one. That's why I have a one at the top. The alkaline earth metals, as you move to the right, they gain one more electron. They have all have two valence electrons. And that's, that's pretty much the pattern that follows there. The third shell is, again, going to want to fill up with eight. It can actually hold 18, but that's getting into a little bit more detail than we need to in this video. You want to remember the, that eight is really the magic number when it comes to these elements trying to feel the most stable. So as we go from, from neon over here, if you look at neon all the way down to radon, those are called the noble gases. They have a full outer shell of eight electrons, and they are completely stable. They're not going to explode. They're safe to be around and actually never form any compounds with any other elements. Um, they're very happy the way they are. The rest of the elements are all sort of restless they would like to have that full outer shell, but they don't quite have enough electrons. Either they have just a few extra that they want to try to get rid of, or they have almost eight and they're trying to find some. And I'll be, getting in, I'll be doing some more videos that get into the ionic bonding that happens when they trade electrons. But this is kind of the basics of what do these valence electrons mean, and where, you know, how do you know on the periodic table what, what, what elements have what valence electrons. So if I turn off this one layer here and I put this one up, I already did all the valence electrons and all the electron configurations for the first 18 elements. And you can see it here, the valence electrons are in red. And so as you look up and down a column, this is the alkaline earth metals right here, they both have two red dots, two valence electrons. The boron family, three. The carbon family has four, if you count those. Nitrogen family, five, and so on. Until you get to a full shell, helium has two because it's so small, but the rest will have eight going below argon. You have krypton, xenon, radon, they're all going to have eight, and they're going to be stable. Okay? So that's some of the basics of valence electrons and how you find them, and just by looking at the periodic table, how you can tell how many, predict how many valence electrons an, an element will have. One trick you can do before we wrap this video up is if you, if you don't have the numbers at the top of the periodic table here, which usually you don't, just look at the column numbers that can give you a clue. So hydrogen, you have the one here. I'll circle it so that you can, you can see what I'm talking about. Hydrogen has one, so that's one valence electron. Alkaline earth metal is two. Move over here. Now look at the single digit. These have three in a carbon family, they all have four. Nitrogen family, these all have five valence electrons, six valence electrons, seven valence electrons for halogens. So notice how I, I circled the single digit. That can give you uh, a reminder, a little trick to remind you of how many valence electrons they have. So I hope this video helped clear up some things about how these atoms work and the valence electrons work. I know it's a lot of information I tried to pack in this video. Um, but you know, leave me comments if you have any questions, and um, I'll try to get to it in the next video. So thanks for watching.